autumnal night to the Ridge Club and, uh, and to this very special presentation by Margot Medical. Now, I, I should tell you at the beginning that I am not the brilliant Dr. Keith Lockhart famed for regenerative <laughs> joint therapy. I am a simple measure uh, member of the Ridge Club, uh, Keith Lockhart, who some of you may know as the now 25-year veteran conductor of the Boston Pops. So why am I up here, you may ask? Good question. Well, I will, I will tell you that. And uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a tale, so uh, get comfortable. About um, five years ago, my wife and I, with our children who were at that point uh, four and two years old, uh, fell in love with the game. We actually fell in love with the years before that, but five years ago we decided to do something about it, and uh, we bought a place in East Sandwich, and looking for a place that offered uh, the kind of recreational things that uh, we wanted to take advantage of, we joined the Ridge Club a year after that, and one of my, you, you may look at me and say, you must have always wanted to be a musician, right? And I said, well, actually, no, I really wanted to be a baseball player when I was nine or 10. It was the year of the amazing Mets, and it was 1969, and boy, I wanted to play second base for them. But that didn't happen. Um, but one of my goals um, that has gone in and out of focus during uh, my entire life was that I've always loved the sport of tennis. Um, I've, I've always just thought it was, an amazing uh, combination of exercise and competition and just a lot of fun. And this place has two glorious, beautiful clay courts that are kept in immaculate condition by the, uh, the pro at the Ridge Club, who is Mr. John Nicolito, who is the guy over there. Um, he's doing something with his phone. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Um, and, I, and I really wanted to become a good tennis player. I played at it for years. I never really took it seriously. And I had this, this, this thought. You see, um, I, I may be known as the boyish looking conductor of the Boston Pops, but I, <laughs> I am five weeks shy of my 60th birthday at this point, so I'm not, thank you. And without digging for too many compliments here, I will say that at least I am older than I appear at any rate. And as I was looking down at about 55, 56, I said, you know, I really need to learn to play tennis well. And I need to do this by the time I'm 60. So I've got it locked down, and I can fight against the inevitable ravages of time, and I can play till I'm 80, 85. My wife loves to play, we're getting my kids into playing, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, through the incredible tutelage of John, uh, I wouldn't say I'm there yet, but I'm certainly a far better tennis player than I was three or four years ago. But um, over those first couple of years of him putting me through my paces, I was realizing that I was beginning to feel a lot older than I wanted to feel. Uh, and in particular, uh, my knees were hurting at the, at the end of playing tennis if I played two or three days in a row to the point that I was leaning on the handrail as I went upstairs because I just couldn't stand the amount of pain that was happening in my knees. And I thought, wow, this is not where I want to be at 57 or 58. This is, uh, this is really a bad sign. And um, I was concerned enough about it to talk to John who introduced me to the person on my left, whom I will introduce you to shortly, and uh, the reason you guys have come here. Uh, I am not a doctor, and I am not in a position to formally endorse this. I can only tell you about my own experience. Um, last uh, year, I met Tim, and we talked about the possibility of a solution to uh, my problems with my knees. Uh, we talked quite a bit, and uh, I hemmed and hauled and hesitated, and finally in May, uh, last May, I agreed to have this procedure, and I did indeed have a stem cell injection procedure in both of these knees. What particularly attracted me to Marigold Medical was um, that I, I could sense that a great deal of thought had gone into this as a holistic treatment, uh, not just get a shot, feel better, but really, a, a, it seemed, they seem to have a very good game plan for making a positive difference that would last past whatever the advantage of this injection was. And uh, at the time uh, that prior to uh, 
the having the procedure done. I was uh, an Advil junkie. I was uh, probably swallowing an average of eight to 12 Advil a day uh, for both that and for my shoulder, which is the product of having waved it at orchestras for the last 40 years. Um, and I will tell you that since I had that procedure on May 3rd, May 4th of this year, I have had probably a dozen Advil in the time since that. Uh, because as part of the uh, protocol after the uh, procedure, you were asked not to take anti-inflammatories because actually the inflammation process is part of what causes the procedure to take hold. Um, and I realized that I had built myself up into this cycle of having to, uh, assuming that this was gonna make me feel better. When in result, actually the result of going cold turkey uh, made me realize that that was not really what was making me feel better at all. Uh, the procedure, because I was in a rush because I had to, had to open the pop season in like two days, I, I did two or three days before the 2019 spring season of the Boston Pops, on which, in which I am on the podium five or six days a week. Um, bad timing, you may say, but at least I knew I was going to be in town. The procedure from uh, the x-rays and the analysis were, well, I think, uh, I think that Dr. Tim had probably done analysis before that, but the formal medical analysis uh, was done within the space of a day. It was an entirely painless procedure, and I drove myself home from the procedure. I was on the podium two days later, and what I can tell you since then is that I just went out and played an hour and a half or so of tennis with Dr. Tim. I didn't hold back. Uh, he didn't hold back, and by the way, he is a real tennis player. Where I am an aspiring real tennis player. There is a difference. Um, and um, I have absolutely no pain in my knees, and I have not had any pain in my knees since the point of that procedure. They are flexible. <laughs> I have uh, the ability to push off hard in directions that I was beginning to not have uh, at the end of last summer's tennis season. Um, I don't know what the, the, the long-term prognosis is. They can, they can address this better than, than, uh, than I can. What I can tell you is that so far there has been absolutely no downside to the procedure. And I have a degree of flexibility and, and, and ability that I was afraid I was gonna lose prior to turning 60. Um, on top of that, uh, there, there is, this is, again, as I said, not just a single shot and you're all better sort of thing. They have set a protocol for me that involves physical therapy and dealing with uh, the basically crooked way in which I've been holding my body for the last six decades, um, including the use of orthotics in my shoes, including uh, physical therapy, the kind of the idea being basically that you don't want to just fix the problem and have the problem reoccur because you're doing the exact same thing wrong that you were before. So all I can say is this. This has really worked for me. I've really enjoyed getting to know Dr. Michael and Dr. Tim and their, their staff. Uh, they're, they're wonderful, professional, very, very easy to deal with. And as I said, at least one of them is a half, not half bad tennis player. Uh, and I would only say that I think it's probably in your best interest to listen to what they have to say. So without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, to my left, this is Dr. Timothy Gallagher. Thank you. And to my right, this is Dr. Michael Marciello. And together, not me, together these two, are the geniuses behind Marigal Medical. And I will hand it over to them. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, wait, <laughs> welcome to the Bridge Club, ladies and gentlemen, as Kim